Morning, everybody. First things first, uh, in my response to young Devin Jacobs' Catcher in the Rye review, which I posted in the previous episode's bonus calls video, I may have implied that Ashley, my lovely and long-suffering girlfriend, was a particular admirer of the work of Steven Spielberg. Ashley told me if I snort derisively at the mention of Steven Spielberg one more time, I can pack my bags and get the fuck out. Seriously. I just want to make it clear that this was only a joke and should not be construed as indicative of Ashley's actual opinion of the work of Steven Spielberg. Thank you. Now then, the following comments are taken from editions of Mail Call printed in the Herald Mail from May 1st through May 11th and available online in their entirety at www.herald-mail.com. I would like to say that I think Obama is trying to destroy this country. He is for the foreigners, he is not for the American people, and he should stay out of the deal with Arizona. An Arizona governor had a right to do what she'd done, and those people protesting are probably illegal immigrants themselves. So come on, Obama, stay out of it or enforce it. Hagerstown. Ah, yes, yes, Barack Obama hates Americans, loves foreigners, and is trying to destroy this country. Since he took office, taxes have gone down for 95% of us. 30,000 more troops have been shipped out to Afghanistan to kill terrorists, and more Americans now have, or soon will have, access to affordable health care than ever before. He obviously has it out for us. I think we can all agree on that, so let's just move on, shall we? But you know, since the enforcement of immigration policy and security along international borders is traditionally the role of the federal government, there actually is some question as to whether the governor of Arizona had a right to do what she done. And I may not be out there in the streets protesting it, but I do think that the new Arizona immigration law is an embarrassment to any free society. I'm not an illegal immigrant. I'm an American, natural-born citizen. I mean, I can't prove it. I don't have my birth certificate on me. But that's what you're asking. I'm calling in reference of all the Mexicans coming to the U.S. Why not? Why doesn't Obama reverse the NAFTA Act and bring the jobs back to America? Then we'll have more jobs for everyone, Mexicans and Americans. And while he's at it, maybe we can start writing our credit card interest off our taxes again. That would help the American people. Yeah, and while he's at it, why doesn't he pay off all our mortgages, fully fund all our libraries and public schools, and teleport all the nuclear weapons into the sun? All it takes is a swish of his magic scepter. This is one of those calls where I'm not sure if the caller is fucking with me or is sincerely this stupid. The president doesn't rescind NAFTA and rewrite the tax code as suggested because those kinds of changes require acts of Congress. The president can only veto or sign bills. He has no legislative power. And he doesn't bring the jobs back to America because he hates America and wants to destroy it. I thought we were clear on that. Interesting read in Money Magazine. If the money that has spent in the war in Iraq that was not necessary in the first place had been put in Social Security instead, the fund would have been shored up for a hundred years. That's not all that money could have been used for. Ready to be depressed? This is the Billion Dollar Gram, a chart created by David McCandless at Information is Beautiful to help visualize how much money we spend on things relative to the cost of other things we might be spending it on and to how much other countries are spending on the same thing. See that big purple rectangle to the upper right? That's the total estimated cost of the war in Iraq so far. See that much smaller orange rectangle to the left of it? That's how much it would cost to feed and educate every child on Earth for five years. Yeah. David McCandless also made this, which visualizes the time travel plots of various popular films and television shows. The white line extending from that circle on the left is pointing to when Marty McFly, the Terminator, and the original Star Trek crew were all in California circa 1985. It's not relevant to anything I'm talking about, or I'm going to talk about, but I think it's kind of pretty. One thing's certain, if you drill baby drill, it's going to spill baby spill, and that'll kill baby kill. That's a big deal, baby deal. 
And that's real, baby. It's real. I agree with you 100%, but my man, you have no poetry game whatsoever. Have a little pride in your work. Take a minute before you call in to write a sonnet or a limerick. Something like, BP has caused quite a commotion by spilling their crude in the ocean. And soon they'll take aim at the parties to blame and punish them via promotion. Drop that on the interns who pull mail call together. It'll blow their fucking minds. On second thought, don't bother. They'd probably fuck up the enjambment when they printed it. I'm saddened as I drive around town and see ragged, soiled American flags flying on staff at businesses and homes. Look up. Is one of these flags yours? Replace it with a bright new one. Contact your local scout troop or veterans organizations to respectfully dispose of it. Our flag represents the history of our nation and the sacrifices made in her name. Honor it. A tattered old American flag can be a sorry sight, that's for sure. But I'd still take a ripped, weathered, fucked up American flag over a pristine Washington County flag. Have you seen our flag? Jesus, look at that fucking thing. There's green and blue and white stripes and red stripes that I guess are supposed to look like a W, but look more like the logo to some regional airline. And there's George Washington's fucking head right in the middle of it, surrounded by stars like somebody just punched him in the face and he's still dazed by it. God damn it, just, just get rid of that thing. I can't stand to look at it anymore. Just take it away! And finally, this one from Hagerstown. Maybe more people should know the Pledge of Allegiance. One nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. The Pledge of Allegiance has actually been revised several times since it was first composed by Francis Bellamy in 1892 to encourage patriotism among American children on the quadricentennial of Columbus's arrival in the New World. My personal favorite version of the pledge is the one that was used from 1924 to 1954. That's the version that Congress first recognized as the official national pledge in 1942 as part of the flag code, and it reads, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all. The superfluous, exclusionary, and unconstitutional phrase under God wasn't added until 1954, after Congress and the President at the height of Cold War spawned anti-commie paranoia caved to religious interests, and an oath that could have been recited by any patriotic American was reduced to yet another public relations tool for the church. I like the pre-under God pledge, relatively speaking. I'm not nuts about pledges of allegiance in general. They reek of paranoia, especially when you encourage school children to say them every goddamn morning. Around age 13 or so, I stopped saying the pledge every morning. Not because of the under God thing, I wasn't an atheist yet, not that I would have needed to be, but because I figured after saying it every morning from kindergarten through middle school, my allegiance to the United States of America ought to have been pretty well fucking established. So from then on, I would just stand quietly with my hands clasped behind my back while my classmates said the pledge, and I only actually recited it myself once a year before our annual Veterans Day assembly. Once a year should have been plenty, right? For Christ's sake, we only make the president take his oath twice, max. Oh, and Hagerstown, since you don't seem to know how the pledge actually goes, I'm going to assume that you also didn't know any of that about under God, even though it's fairly common knowledge. I bet you also didn't know this. You know how you hold your hand over your heart when you say the pledge? Well, that's only been the official stance from which to say the pledge since 1942. Before that, when people would recite the Pledge of Allegiance, they did this. Look familiar? Don't worry. The Nazis stole it from us. Thanks for watching.